The Amazing Spider Moon, Issue Number Seven, The Return of the Vulture. For those of you who missed Spider-Man Issue Number Two, which concerned his spectacular battle with one of the most dangerous villains of all time, the awesome Flying Vulture, no man knew the secret behind the Vulture's ability to fly until Spider-Man deduced that his wings were operated by a unique form of magnetic power, and so Spider-Man created a powerful anti-magnetic inverter, which he used against the Vulture in their final battle. With his magnetic power nullified due to Spider-Man's inverter, the Vulture was forced to spiral to the ground into the waiting arms of the police, and so ended the epic battle. Vulture will never threaten anyone again. For months, it seems that Spider-Man's prediction is correct, as the imprisoned Vulture becomes a model inmate of state prison. The Vulture is the best behaved prisoner in the place. That's why the Warden made him a trustee and lets him use the machine shop. The gullible fools, they don't suspect that I'm putting together another flying device for myself, right under their noses. I've taken all the parts I need. Tonight I'll make my final test in my cell. And after bed check. It works. Not as powerful as my original flying device, but good enough to get me over the wall to freedom. The next day, during exercise period in the prison courtyard. Farewell. It is time for the vulture to fly again. Look, he made himself a new flying gizmo. He's gliding over the wall. How easy it was. By the time the guards can organize a search party, I'll be safely hidden, miles away. And when next I appear, I'll have a new set of wings, far more powerful than before. Meanwhile, in the schoolyard in the town I, some volleyball practice is in progress. Here, Butterfingers. Think you can toss that big, bad, heavy ball all the way back to me? If I used my Spider-Man strength, it would go clean through you, loudmouth. Interrupt our program to bring you a special bulletin. The Vulture has escaped from state prison. All citizens are urged to lock their doors and report any suspicious- The Vulture escaped! Spider-Man is the best suited to catch him. I've got to get out of here, fast. I- I don't feel very well. I'll ask Coach Smith if I may be excused. We might have known. A fast game of volleyball is too much for poor puny Parker. Just my crummy luck. Every time I have to take off to change to Spider-Man, everyone thinks I'm chickening out because of weakness. It's not too much for me, Flash. I just have a, a headache, that's all. Strange, I always get those headaches whenever something exciting is going on. Later at home. This double identity jazz is for the birds. I can't take much more ribbing as Peter Parker. Sooner or later, someone's gonna lose a mouthful of teeth. Let's see, I'd better check all my equipment. I've got my anti-magnetic inverter with me, and my web shooter's positioned and ready for action. My camera's in its case, loaded with fresh film. I refilled my web fluid capsule, and all devices check out. A-OK. -okay. This web shooter is the coolest thing I ever dreamed of. I could do almost anything with it. The vulture won't stand a chance. I had to wait almost 20 minutes, but now, according to my spider sense, the street is empty. I can't ever take the chance of someone seeing me leave the house in broad daylight. A few minutes later. Mommy, Daddy, I just saw Spider-Man swinging across the rooftops. You're just imagining things, Bobby. What would Spider-Man be doing here in a quiet residential neighborhood in Forest Hills? But Spider-Man doesn't remain in any one neighborhood for long, with does one speech he adds for the hearts of the city. The Vulture's a fool. I beat him before with my anti-magnetic inverter. Doesn't he realize I can do it again? Well, hours later, in another part of the sprawling metropolis. Now to try out my new modified wings. Ah, I've been sighted by a police helicopter. Or in luck, there's the Vulture. Good, this will give me a chance to test my greater than ever flying power under actual combat conditions. Calling headquarters, have located Vulture. I can maneuver perfectly. Compared to my wings, that whirlybird is a slow, cumbersome, clumsy old tub. That character could turn on a dime. 
No aircraft can catch me. There isn't a ship built that can duplicate feats like this. Hmm, a jewelry showroom. I might as well put this visit to some good use. The vulture? How, how did you get in here? The same way I shall leave with your most valuable gems. Just watch me. How easy that was. Nothing can stop a flying man. I can go anywhere, do anything, and all of space is my escape route. Help! I've been robbed! Help! If I fly low enough, I cannot be tracked by radar. The police will never know where I shall strike next. Hey, look, it's the vulture. Somebody do something. Like what? We can't risk shooting at him. He's clever enough to fly over the crowd. If a bullet should miss him, it might ricochet and hit an innocent bystander. That's what he's counting on. He knows we won't fire so long as he remains in the heart of the city. But in all of New York, there is one person who is capable of meeting the vulture on his own terms. And that person finally finds his prey. At last, my spider sense led me to the vulture. I've got to get closer. My anti-magnetic inverter only works at short range. So, we meet again, Spider-Man. Spider-Man doesn't suspect that his anti-magnetic device which defeated me before will not work this time. Therefore, he will allow me to get close to him, which is what I want to do. He's flying straight towards me. Perfect. This will be our final encounter, you young fool. I'm glad I brought my camera, too. What a picture this will make. Jameson ought to pay me a fortune. I'll snap him just as my inverter makes him spiral to the ground. And now. It worked. I'm almost disappointed. It was too easy. I'll pretend to be falling. He'll sure to follow me down. He's descending totally unprepared. Now for my next move. Oh, what a beautiful revenge this will be for the vulture. Did I see him smile as he started to fall? Ah, it must be my imagination. Perfect. He can't travel as quickly as I. He has to descend ledge by ledge. And now, while he's on that ledge above, he can't see me. He doesn't realize I'm swooping up to him again. My spider sense is starting to tingle. But why? The vulture must be a prisoner on the ground by now. There can't be any danger here. If I timed it right, he should be just reaching the edge of the parapet. Ow! Oh. Surprise, Spider-Man! Even you cannot ward off a double uppercut while you're completely off balance. Momentarily stunned by the force and total unexpectedness of the vulture's attack, Spider-Man is helpless before his powerful foe's continued onslaught. This time the victory is mine. Look up there, above the rooftops, it's the vulture battling with Spider-Man. Thank heaven Spider-Man found him. He's the only one who can defeat the Vulture single-handed. Guess again, lady. The Vulture is clobbering him. You never suspected I had improved my wings so that they could change magnetic poles instantly, nullifying your useless inverter. So that's why... Oh. Happy landing, Spider-Man. I gotta shoot my web. Fast. Catch onto the building. Break my fall. I missed. I gotta try again. I'm falling too fast. Too far. I can't do it. It fell short. No time for another try. I gotta spin around in air to slow my rate of descent. I must break my fall. We'll take all my spider strength. Spin. Keep spinning. Keep... Oof. Spider-Man is finished. My revenge is complete. Now the vulture is supreme. Look at the shocked crowds below. They saw what happened. No man will ever dare defy me now. The vulture defeated Spider-Man. Look, he's flying off now. Like a conquering hero. Or Spider-Man. Despite what Jameson's editorial said about him, the cops always felt he was on our side. He'll sure be missed, whoever he was. But, although badly shaken up, the costume's teenager is still alive, saved by his amazing spider strength. Got to get up. I can't stay here. I can't let anyone discover me. Lucky to be alive. I didn't think I'd make it. Ow! My arm! I must have landed on it. Feels like it's broken. Guess I can't complain. It probably saved my life. If I hadn't been able to spin around. If I had landed on my head instead. Zowie. Wearily, cautiously, Spider-Man reaches his home and then quietly enters through a rear window. I don't think I broke any bones. 
The arm's probably just sprained, but boy does it ever hurt. I won't be able to use it for days. Well, better change back to Peter Parker now while I still can. But just then... Peter, is that you? I thought I heard someone in there. Aunt May, I can't let her find me here like this. She's opening the door. Peter, dear. Oh, for goodness sakes, I must have been hearing things. Although, it's strange that he's not here yet. She knows how I worry when he comes home late. He's such a fragile boy. Not a roughneck like that Flash Thompson. Ew, that was a close one. If Aunt May ever suspected the truth about fragile me... Wow, boy, it took almost half an hour to change duds. I'm sure not going to break any speed records with this arm of mine. Now to slip out and come in the front door is Peter Parker. I hope Aunt May won't make a federal case out of my sprained arm. I've got to think up of a good excuse for it. That's night. Please stop worrying, Mrs. Parker. I can assure you it's only a sprain. Although it is a painful one, your nephew's arm will be fine in a few weeks. A few weeks? The vulture won't wait that long. Oh well, I'll worry about the vulture when the time comes. Right now, my biggest problem is Aunt May. Are you sure he shouldn't go to the hospital, Doctor? Positive, Mrs. Parker. Now promise me you won't play those dangerous volleyball games in the schoolyard anymore, dear. Not for the next week, Aunt May. The next day. I hated to lie to Aunt May, but I couldn't very well say I hurt my arm when I fell on a rooftop fighting the vulture. Uh-oh, look who's coming. Well, well, where's your Purple Heart medal, Petey boy? How'd big brave Peter hurt his poor little arm? Did you try to turn too many heavy pages at one time, bookworm? Or did you drop a nasty little test tube on it in the lab? Look at Peter blush. Oh, Flash, honey, you're a scream. Blush? They don't recognize I'm livid with anger. If I ever let go, I'll splatter that clown all over the landscape. Meantime, the vulture, basking in his triumph, relaxes at his bald hideout, an innocent-looking abandoned forum solo on Staten Island, not far from the heart of Manhattan. No one will ever think to look for me here. This is the life. No more Spider-Man to worry about. Nothing to do but plan my next big haul. And I think I know what it's going to be. One of the biggest payrolls in New York is at the office of J. Jonah Jameson. He publishes the Daily Bugle and Now magazine. He must employ hundreds of workers. And that means hundreds of nice, fat, juicy pay envelopes, just waiting for the vulture to fly in and grab them. It's the end of the week now, so all the dough must be in the safe, ready for payday. Only it's going to be my payday this time. And at the offices of the Daily Bugle, we find young Peter Parker talking to J. Jonah Jameson's secretary. Oh, Peter, nobody could sprain his arm playing volleyball. What really happened? Okay, I'll tell you the truth. It happened in the air while I was fighting the vulture for dear life. Oh, well, ask a silly question. So let's just stick to the volleyball story, okay? Miss Brandt, send Parker in now. I'll admit that's a fine picture of the vulture, Parker, but I can't pay more than $10 for it. After all, he's been seen all over town. Lots of people have snapped him. I want something different. Aw, uh, come on, Mr. Jameson. Nobody's taken a close-up like this before. Well, all right, I'll pay twelve fifty. Better save your dough, sucker. You're gonna need it. Greetings, Jameson. If you'll pay for a mere photo of me, what will you give for the vulture in the flesh? Holy cow, it's him. The vulture. I'll tell you what. I'll set the price myself. So open your safe and empty it out for me. No, no, you can't rob my payroll. You mustn't. It's all I've got. It would put me out of business. Shut up. I'm not interested in your troubles, now do as I say, or else. And stop blubbering like a coward. Have you no conscience? No feelings? You're, you're as bad as Spider-Man. Bite your tongue, JJ. I've spent years building up this business. It means everything to me. You can't... Oh, can't I? The Vulture can do anything, as you're about to learn. Jameson is such a skinflint, he'd probably rather get shot than part with his dough. I'll have to slip out now and try to save him, whether he likes it or not. Look, maybe we can make a deal. I can give you publicity. All I want is money, mister. Your money. 
Where greenbacks are concerned, Jameson can outtalk anybody. Ow, it's some job putting my costume on with this blammed arm of mine. I'll try to alter my webbing slightly so it'll act like a sling. With luck, no one will notice. I ought to have my head examined for tackling the vulture with a bad arm, but this will sure make me seem heroic when they write my obituary. All right, vulture, playtime's over. Here's where we separate the men from the boys. Spider-Man, you're still alive? Well, you won't stay that way for long. Even you can be stopped by a bullet. Maybe so, but first you've got to be able to fire the bullet. Bah, guns aren't my style anyway. What does the mighty vulture need a weapon for? I've got my wings. You'll have a harp too by the time I get through with you. Oh, he's using Jameson as a shield. I can't let go with a good punch. Oof. Spider-Man, look out, you fool! I'll be hurt, let me go! That stopped him long enough for me to break out of here. I can't fight as well at close quarters. I need room, space to use my wings to their best advantage. Wah! What's going on? You stay here, Jameson. From now on, it's a private battle between the Vulture and me. No, no, you two will wreck the place. Let him go. Leave him to the police. There isn't time. If he gets a chance to fly off, we may never trap him again. Oop. Get to the side of the road, gal. This must all be a bad dream. Police! Someone call the police! Those two maniacs must be stopped! Miss Brandt, where in blazes are you? Here, Mr. Jameson, where it's safe. He's trying to find a window he can fly through. I've got to stop him. I warn you, Spider-Man, stay out of my way while you still can. Mister, I thrive on warnings. In fact, someday I'm going to write an article for the Reader's Digest titled, The Most Unforgettable Warning I've Ever Known. Very funny. Get down from there. Ha, you missed me by a mile. My ledgers, my files, look what you're doing. Ah, uh, go slide down a barbed wire fence. Can't make it to the window up there. I'll try a lower floor. Spider-Man can never defeat me. If I ever catch that marked menace, I'll sue him for all he's worth. I'll put him in jail for life. I'll make him pay for this. This isn't exactly flying, but it'll serve my purpose. Who's chasing who? This place is haunted. This is more like it. I'm in the press room. I have enough flying space again. I'll destroy Spider-Man forever now, if he's fool enough to follow me here. I had a hunch the vulture would land down here. The odds are all in his favor now, but that never stopped me before. He doesn't see me yet, so here goes nothing. Hey, what? It's you again. Well, it sure isn't the Lone Ranger. Didn't expect me so soon, did you? You just made your fatal last mistake, Spider-Man. I'll shake you off like a dog shakes a flea. I think your modesty is what I like best about you. Let's see if a wisecrack will help you once you're falling into those big press rollers. I've got to keep ribbing him. My only chance is to make him so angry that he won't notice my injured arm. Suddenly, the agile vulture changes direction and zooms up to the ceiling with towering effects. Ow, my arm. The pain is too great. I can't hold on. Ha, I've caught you off guard. If I hit those giant rollers, I'm done for. My web has to save me now. This time, there'll be no second chance. I made it. Now to descend slowly and... Oh no, the vulture's cutting my life-saving strand. I had a hunch you'd try that, Spider-Man. But while dangling above, the colorful teenager has time enough to estimate the distance. And with one mighty leap... Phew, that was a close one. I gotta reach the vulture before he flies out of range. But how? Uh-oh, my spider sense warns me he's waiting above. It's a trap, but I'll let him spring it. Ah, you blundered right into my trap, as I knew you would. Well, mercy me. I'll take you up so high that you'll be completely helpless. Even a spider is powerless in the sky. Are you sure you were never vaccinated with a phonograph needle? Your flippancy is wasted on me, Spider-Man. You're just whistling in the dark. I know an icy fear must be gripping your heart right now. Well, I'll admit I've had happier moments. Before I drop you, Spider-Man, I want to say I admire your courage. Anyone else would be begging for mercy now. I'm almost sorry to have to do this. Yeah, I can see that you're all broken up. Well, I'm going to tell you a secret. This little party isn't over yet. Watch. You, you pinned my wings with your web. You fool. If I can't fly, we both will perish. Well, who wants to live forever? I don't want to die. Save me. Do something, please. Please, save me. I can't. I'm too busy admiring your tight-lipped courage. 
Well, anything to stop your moaning. Suppose I spin a little web while we fall. Out of time like this? Sure, it might be fun. Especially if I make it with my new semi-solid fluid, which enables it to act like a parachute. Look, in the sky, a giant parachute. There are two figures dangling from it. Who are they? I can't tell. Too high up. Wait, they're getting closer. I... I could make out a costume. It's Spider-Man and the Vulture. Spider-Man's beating him. By some miracle, Spider-Man won. You had this plan in mind the whole time. Darn right I did, Curly. I don't depend on my wings to do my thinking for me, like some guy I could mention. Well, playmate, this is where I get off. I'll let you solo the rest of the way down. If you enjoy it, it could make a great hobby. You haven't heard the last of me, Spider-Man. You mean you're gonna flap your lips till the bitter end? Spider-Man, wait! Well, if it isn't Laughing Boy Jameson, he probably wants to apologize and offer me a big reward. And who am I to refuse? Yes, Mr. Jameson? I want you to know that I hold you responsible for all the damage done to my building. It's all your fault for but again. Say, what are you? A professional nut? I'll show you who's really a nut. Sooner or later, I'll learn who you really are. And when I do... Yeah, then what? I'll get what's coming to me. In spades. Mister, I'm about to give you something right now that's been coming to you for months. No, no, you wouldn't dare. Don't. Why not? What have I got to lose? You couldn't hate me any more than you do now. But anyhow, I won't have to listen to you for a while. That won't wear off for at least an hour. <laughs> Minutes later, a silent figure noiselessly enters the building in his own inimitable manner. So far, so good. The coast is clear. Hope nobody found my civvy clothes. Nope, they're just where I hid them. And within seconds, the amazing Spider-Man vanishes to be replaced by a swing-wearing, innocent-looking Peter Parker. The worst thing about being Spider-Man is changing clothes a zillion times a day. Oh well, it keeps me out of the pool room. Hi, Betty. What are you doing behind that desk? It's the only safe place, Peter. This office was a madhouse a few minutes ago. Mind if I join you? Be my guest. By the way, where were you while Spider-Man was battling the Vulture? Me? Oh, I was hiding in a closet. I'm afraid I'm just not the heroic type. Neither am I. Maybe that's why I like you so much, Peter. At least you don't pretend to be what you're not. Boy, if she only knew. <laughs> Look, Mr. Jameson can't talk. I wonder what's wrong with him. Wrong? It's an improvement. Peter, sometimes they get the feeling that you're laughing at a secret little joke that's all your own. If you keep using that cool perfume, Betty, I may just break down and tell you about it someday. Peter Parker, that's the closest thing to a romantic remark I've ever heard you say. Gosh, I can be more romantic than that. Here, rest your head on my shoulder, Blue Eyes, and let's enjoy the silence. But what will Mr. Jameson say? Nothing, baby. For at least an hour. We admit it, this isn't a typical ending for a typical superhero tale, but we've never claimed that Spider-Man was a typical superhero. In fact, next issue, he does some very untypical things. But see for yourself when we meet again. The end. Well guys, that was issue number 7 of The Amazing Spider-Man. We saw the return of the Vulture, who was obviously a bit stronger this time around, and we can see that things are kind of heating up between Peter and Betty at the Daily Bugle. But anyways guys, thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys enjoyed this series, be sure to smash that like button to show your support, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.